All right, plinkers and tinkerers, we're going to move on with part two of the full breakdown of the Crossman uh, AR platform BB gun. Um, st stay tuned in this one, guys. I will be showing you the difference between a full AR, uh, full automatic uh, fire control unit and a semi-automatic fire control unit for all you guys in the UK. Um, so... As you saw in part one, I could not get the firing pin valve, the slash blowback valve chamber thing out of my upper receiver. Uh, I did it off camera. Um, I just grasped my upper receiver. I got my hands around the spent cartridge deflector so that I didn't want it to bounce out and pop out. And by the way, if you're taking this out for painting, I would say tape, do a tape job on this. Most people will paint everything the same way. But uh, I don't see any point in popping this out. It looks plasticky and it just seems like something might snap. So I, was ju I just held it firmly. I gave it a couple of taps on the edge of the table. Taking care to not bang uh, the, the forward assist. Uh, so it doesn't get loose and pop out. So you're just going to bang it on the edge. It should wedge out a little bit. It was still uh, pretty tight. So what I did was I grabbed uh, an Allen key, a hex key. I wedged it uh, on this side. And then using the L shape and this part of your upper receiver, I just I wedged it past the tough part. And once I got it past there, it just it it came right out so that's how you get that guy out now to finish with the bolt carrier group just quickly before we get into the lower receiver um i think crossman calls this a hammer it's, uh i'll get into the functions maybe in another video um so uh, this is their hammer this they call it the hammer chip if you look on their parts list, it's something like the hammer chip, but this is the chip. It, we're going to leave it in there. It's press fitted in. Um, if you're having issues with your Crossman, maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's too far out. You'll have to push it back in. Maybe it wore out and uh, it it it's not making proper contact with the firing pin. Uh, maybe it's shattered, but if it's in there... We're, you leave it in there. There's no reason to take it out. Uh, it's just... Uh, there's nothing inside here. So we'll leave that like that. Uh, there's only two screws on the bolt carrier, bolt carrier group. Um, here's a mechanics tip for you guys. These might seem to be recessed. And you might have the, fe the feeling you want to go with a small Phillips... But that's the perfect recipe for stripping uh, your your screw head or damaging your Phillips. Uh, the The trick is to always go bigger at, before you go smaller. Because the small Phillips is just pointy enough to get all the way down. And then it just has enough grip to just grab on the edge of your 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 screw head slot. And it bang you just it'll just strip everything so the trick is you start bigger and this a number two could just barely fit in the hole although yeah it, it's gonna grind against the ed edge of the hole so we're just gonna go one step down and this guy is gonna if it doesn't fit in your hole yeah i, I should stop saying that uh anyways it's not a super small Phillips. It's it's probably a bigger size Phillips. If you're having issues and you're spinning, you don't want to strip your threads, guys, or your the, the head of your screw, or even damage your tool because you will damage your tool. So only two screws. See, even with this Phillips, I'm gonna go bigger once I got the heads out of the hole. I'm gonna go bigger because there we go. The only crazy people do not change 
when presented with new... Anyways, you know the expression. I'm not here to lecture you guys. Alright, so the two screws are coming out. Uh, these bolt carrier group, yeah, we'll keep things in order. Yeah, uh, off camera I got things back into the frame so you can see every single part that we did in uh, part one. Now you got your striker pin assembly. It should pop, oh, there we go. It should pop right out. Oh, okay. Yeah, see there's lots of gunk in these threads. Maybe I could get them on. There you go. See all that gunk? That's that's why I'm taking this apart. I'm going to get rid of all that. I'm going to clean everything. There's even grease in there. I only shot that uh maybe a dozen rounds through this guy. And it so I'm going to clean all of this. That there's your bolt carrier group. All right. Oh, by the way, um you could disassemble this, but unless you your o-ring here is mangled, and you need to replace it, I would highly recommend you just leave all this assembled. If you want to clean it, clean it. If you want to polish any rubbing parts on your inner, just protect everything with tape and clean it afterwards, but you can easily clean this. There's enough move in the firing pin. Um, and of course, the neighbor's mowing his lawn. I hope that doesn't pick up on the audio. All right, so yeah, you can clean this and leave that in there. And the reason why you don't want to really tinker with this, because this C-clip right here, that's actually very tiny. There's no holes, so you can actually fit a, you know, a retaining clip plier thingy tool and pop it out. So you will have to pry it. It's... It's very small and flimsy, and if you damage that and you don't get a good flat seal, and then if anything's crooked, it you might get malfunctions. So unless you absolutely have to replace your valve here, your valve seal, leave this assembled. We'll clean it like this. Just remember to get all excess water off and to let it air dry and make sure there's no water in this when you reassemble. All right, enough babbling. So the lower receiver. Uh, okay. I guess at this point, before we get into this, we'll deal with the uh, receiver extension slash buffer tube. If you have an A4P, you want to get this, uh, what I guess this is the brace. Um, you're going to want to get this off. On mine, it was a regular pin like this. Uh, you will want to pay attention, as I've mentioned, Crossman and her quality control. There's, they seem to be popping pins in left and right, and it doesn't, it, I think it, I don't know how they go through the process. It seems to be dependent on the person, but if you could see a rounded side and you see there's actually some teeth, I can get this into frame yeah anyways if you always inspect your pins always verify and pop it out the right in the right direction that it, the reverse direction that it was popped in or you're gonna widen you're gonna shear your bores you're gonna widen them stuff will get loose and then you that's another problem that you'll have to fix so um once you pop that pin out it just your 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 brace will come off if you have a dpms then you have to remove this back pin here because that's what it braces it's an ad additional support for the buffer tube ex the receiver extension into the plastic mold so on the dpms the roll pin is longer than on all the other models um do we take that out right now yeah i might as well take that out right now because let's keep everybody on the same page so for all you dpms people let's see if i can 
Now, always make sure you bang stuff out on a level surface. Here, I'm gonna grab just a, a random case I have lying around just for additional support. I just wanna get that, get it started. So I'm gonna punch this roll pin left out with a 1 8 punch. You wanna make sure everything is firm because if you bang on stuff and it wobbles and you're just losing your energy and the whole reason why punches work and is because you're imparting all the blow from your hammer into your punch and the punch is it goes all the directly into your pin so if it wobbles you're losing your energy and you might you you most definitely you're going to mushroom out your punch you're going to mushroom out your roll pin then you're going to shear your bore so always the right tool and you don't have to whack it like the hulk right off the first shot pin should come out with minimal force all right so we got our long pin out so this is for all our DPMS models and it, there's no harm in taking it out now although what you'll see there is it is holding your guide rod for your buffer tube and and uh, hammer slash bolt uh, we'll just put this up to the rear now the proper way to do this is to slack your your your, your buffer tube pin well I, if you line it up also with the the moon it should come out but your spring is always going to get caught in there the easy way to do this is to just move this back out of the way i just like to hold down my buffer spring retaining pin it doesn't serve the same function as on a real one and you hold the pin down and the spring just pops right out so inside there this is your bolt bolt carrier group uh, buffer spring and this is the buffer spring for the hammer what crossman calls their hammer so that's in there and because we removed this rear uh, roll pin we can go ahead and remove the guide uh, rod for the the buffer springs that's going to come out it's going to have a piece of uh, uh, just a rubber it's a bushing that it's going to serve to absorb impact here from the 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 buffer spring bouncing back and forth also full disclaimer you'll notice i have two holes in mine that's because uh, i did a first take on this and i took off the buffer tube and i bent over to get a closer look and i knocked my new camera rig with my head and so yeah so i i put the the buffer tube back and we're back at this point but as you can see while i was reassembling it and this is my warning i'll give the make sure you watch my warning video guys uh, uh my reassembly video because i will be giving a warning about this guy and lining it up and punching it in anyways don't do like i do always be careful see always be careful i knew it could do that and i did it anyways it happened to me so nobody is immune we're gonna continue on let's get the rest of this lower receiver extension out again with a 1 8 punch this more forward so we keep track of it buffer tube is going to come right out Put 
that's in shot, is that in shot? All right, perfect. That's all in shot. Nice. Okay. Now, before we get to the fire control group, we are going to have to remove the pistol grip. Um, unlike a real AR, you got a few things, uh, including this pin holding down your fire control uh, unit. So on a crossman, you got to take this step by step. You can, I don't, I can't, I don't have light shining down my pistol grip. I'll find my screw. There we go. So make sure your screwdriver is in line with your pistol grip. Because if you go in crooked, you're going to strip your threads. And here, maybe just keep a good grip. The springs aren't that strong, but you don't want to break them or kink them. So there is a spring alert here, guys. Spring alert. Go ahead and unscrew this screw all the way. There we go. There's your pistol grip screw. All right, spring alert, guys. So there's your fire selector detent spring, as on most ARs, all ARs, uh, you can see it right there. And on the Crossman, we got our rear takedown pin. Uh, it also has a detent, and it's more uh, a capture pin. Anyways, it it that's the pin that stops it from popping out. Uh, you got that spring here, so you're gonna want to remove your pistol grip vertically so you don't damage these springs or lose them or kink them be careful guys this is a spring alert step so this is this we want to keep in order keep track of what direction you take everything out and in here you have of course your two your two pins your detents just a couple of smacks they should pop out enough maybe use a little pair of pliers all right so your black one is the uh, rear takedown pin detent and the chrome the chrome one is uh for the fire selector switch so now you can go ahead and pop we'll go ahead oh there we go also nut alert the nut for the screw of your pistol grip is going to be lodged in this slot right here do not lose that what was i gonna say oh yeah i'm just gonna get rid of this so rear takedown pin Pivot pin, okay. Now, on a real AR, you don't really have to remove your magazine uh, release button or your magazine catch, but on the Crossman, it also serves the function of anchoring the fire control group in place, so we have to remove it. And we also have to remove the fire selector switch to actually get the fire control group out. So, to remove... Uh, like on a real one, gonna jam that magazine button, magazine release button all the way in with the, your finger. You could use it a rounded ish, it has to be rounded or you're gonna really scratch and mar stuff. But you're gonna want to wedge it in there and unscrew your magazine catch. If to get over we're gonna leave uh, the bolt catch and the paddle the uh, bolt catch release on there we'll take we'll deal with that later there will be a, a loose pin stuck in here so I don't want to deal with that now if you want to get over this just gently pull on the magazine catch and complete the rotation another spring alert there is a spring under here guys do not do not let this free uh, free float or anything. All right, one more. We'll pull. Oh, there we go. It's off. Put that to the side and now spring alert. There we go. I told you, spring alert. 
So here's my spring and my magazine button bounced. Oh great. It bounced somewhere. Oh, it bounced into my lower handguard. And here's your mag magazine release button. That's there. We got that out. Now we're just left with a pin and a fire the fire selector. So we're removing all of these because this pin is really the main firm anchor and these are both mechanical parts so I don't want to remove the pin and then having the tension of this on mechanical parts so we're, re we're removing the me mechanical parts all right so like on a real AR you're gonna want to put some pressure and you're it's gonna the cams are gonna jam at some point or maybe not yeah see the oh it actually pop right out if you're having issues you can apply a little pressure on the sear or or the disconnector in the back and just twist it twist it to the to the the safety or the full auto and it at some point the cam should get loose and it, it'll come right out so now that we have the fire selector out we can go ahead and remove this last pin as I mentioned uh, it, it, it's rounded on the right side, so I'm going to punch it right out. Uh, so much for a rule of thumb. Now just be careful. You still got your magazine, uh, your, your bolt catch paddle here. You don't want to damage that and bang on it. This one should come out easily. There should be no more tension built up on the fire control group. 1 16th punch. There we go. So pin is out. And now your another spring alert. Spring alert. The buffer tube spring uh, retaining pin is captured by your low by the fire control group. So we're just gonna ease the fire control group upwards. There's a spring under there. It's not under tension, but you don't want it. You don't want to lose it. Fire tr control group comes out. And here's the last two parts. You have a spring in here. And here's your... Okay, so let's move some tools over. Let's see if I could get this in a user-friendly... Oh, this is... Okay, pin, pin. Can you guys all get that in one shot? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to play with the zoom because then it, I'll have to recenter. But uh, yeah, that's all the parts. All right, guys. So thanks for everybody who didn't skip through everything. I guess uh, anybody could figure it out. You got to skip to the end. Uh, get to the candy so here's the difference between a full auto fire control group Oop, this guy here and a semi-auto fire control group and if you look online on the crossman's part list it they talk about the only two different parts is this they call it a spring although it's more it's I would call this the disconnector because when you're in full auto mode this is the part that keeps the sear down that permits the bolt to just bounce back and forth and as you can see on the semi-auto uh, there we go I can get some light on it just seems like that part either they just cut it off and assemble it or um, can I get light in there yeah or they have another it's just another complete part that's a expert level expert level tinkering job guys uh, I haven't had the guts to take one of these apart but uh, I am gonna have to do it eventually so maybe I'll have more insights on the differences between a full auto and a semi-auto 
but uh, that's all it is. Um, I took my semi-auto and my full-up, uh, the fire selector switch is the same. It even has the same part number. And uh, yeah, so the main difference is your full auto actually has the disconnector that disconnects the sear from the bolt, what Crossman calls their hammer. And on the semi-auto, uh, it the it's just cut off. So every time you fire, your your sear is gonna catch the bolt again. Um, yeah, that's uh, that would be pretty much it for the breakdown, guys. Uh, all right, tinkers, plinkers, quick insert edit. I forgot to uh, remove uh, the bolt catch release mechanism. As I stated before, on all my all my crossmans, this punch is punched in from the front. So you can remove it while it's all assembled. It's just going to stay caught. It's going to catch on... Uh, where is it going to catch? Yeah, it's going to catch on this little edge right here. So it will stay captured while all, the, all of this is assembled. Um, so this is a 1 punch. I'm going to use my roll of tape again. Make sure you don't damage anything. Get everything in line. I'll get this in the light. This one should be an easy one. Also, spring alert. There's a spring under there. So we're going to let the punch follow through the hole because there's a spring in there. Well, this guy's abnormally rough. Okay, maybe 1 16th was too big. Because now, yeah, 1 16th, I'm going to say 1 16th was too big. It got it started. And usually, I've used, well, well it comes out manually after that. So you just got to get it started. I've never had issues. I never actually tried to punch it out completely. Through. So forget about me saying follow this one through. Just get it started and see if you can pry it out from the other side. So now spring alert. Where do I fit this guy in? We'll fit it to the side here. Keep it in order. Now we're gently going to release. There we go. And there's your spring. Going to pop it out. Okay. Now another... Sorry, this video is going to go over half an hour, guys. Now, this part has a couple of pins and press-fitted pieces together. This guy has... I feel like it was cut off, and it might be press-fit. Uh, you shouldn't have issues with this. What you're going to have issues is with is either your magazine catch... Uh, or this metal part right here. Wow. Yeah, there's no unscrewing this. So these two pins here, uh, yeah, hopefully you don't damage it and you don't wear them out prematurely. If you're training and you just got this and this is your first AR, don't be slamming in empty mags in there and then banging on your mag release paddle. Because that magazine catch is pushing up on this. So every time you bang on an empty mag, this is not a machine for, uh, you know, military grade stuff. So don't wear that out. The only other screw here that I did not cover is on your bolt catch. This is the other mechanism that functions with your uh, empty mag bolt catch. So th this paddle here with the screw, this might be your issue if you're having issues uh, on lockbacks, on empty mags. This guy might be worn from slamming against your bolt catch, uh, your magazine uh, empty mag follower uh, mechanism. So hopefully you haven't worn it out prematurely. Um, 
I did go to go on Crossman's site and uh, order every single part that I was allowed to order. There's five, there's six of them, maybe six parts. I ordered one of each. There's no pictures. I'll maybe do an appendix, an update video. Uh, but yeah, okay. So now that is definitely every single part covered in this full breakdown video. Thanks for staying tuned. We're going to continue on after my edit. Okay, guys. Yeah, there will definitely be other videos. So let me see if I can just give you a, a closer look. So we'll start from the rear. All the parts in order. Alright, there we go. Have fun tinkering, guys. Stay tuned.